very quick process, one time process to program your face in. So I'm just gonna keep my finger on the device and you'll hear what happens next, okay? Face learning. Please keep holding the bar for up to 30 seconds. Please name the person in front of you after the beep. UA from Tech the Lead. So now when I look at you, I will hear UA from Tech the Lead. Whoa! Any guesses on what this little device does? Any guesses? Think about it. Is it a USB? Is it a little camera? It's actually a wearable AI device that helps people with visual problems or people who are completely blind. I've got Rocky here from OrCam, and this is the OrCam MyEye 2, the second rendition of the MyEye product. And it goes to the side of your glasses, Absolutely. and it translates visual text into audio text in real time, offline. Not only text, but other things as well, which oh, we'll get to, yeah. Oh, see, it's touch sensitive, so it's a little bit, oh, uh, yeah, yeah. So what can it do? Okay, first of all, like you said, it's a wearable device. Size of my finger, there's a camera in front over here. Small speaker for audio here. Uh, and what it is, it's a wearable device. And so with these little magnets over here on the side of my glasses, I put them on like this, like I normally would. So what can this device do? So Orkin MI2, it can communicate, like you said, visual information by audio in real time. So any text from printed or digital text from any surface, people's faces, colors, money notes, and products even. So our whole mission is to relay the visual word, world to our users who are primarily blind and visually impaired. In a non-invasive way. Absolutely non-invasive way and in real time. So I put the glasses on, my, on myself like I normally would. I take the device that has a magnets here, I just snap it on, and I'm ready to start using it. Very lightweight, it's 0.8 ounces, which is 22.5 grams. I don't even feel like I'm wearing it, basically. The first uh, feature I want to show you is text-to-speech reading. So all I'm going to do is take this uh, page right here, take my finger and point to where I want to start reading on the text, and then you'll hear what happens next, okay? okay? Fitting all this power into such a small device is like putting an elephant into a small closet. Professor Amnon And to stop reading, if I go like this, CEO of it stops reading. So what you just heard and saw took us many, many years to get to this point, right? But very flawless in the execution. What happened is I took my finger, I pointed to the page, and then I heard a beep. Took my hand away, or came snapped the photo, remembered where I placed my finger, and two lines above there started reading you know, the text. Mm, so it's got motion sensor. It can read text. It's taking a visual photograph and translating that into audio text for you to hear. Right, absolutely. And I get the question often if the person is completely blind, you know, what happens? And we have many users who are completely blind and very successfully use OrCam because a different way to read text is by tapping. When I tap the side of the device, OrCam is going to read from the very first word to the last word, not wanting me to miss any of the text. So I'll show you quickly how that works. Oh, OrCam, fitting all this power into such a small device is like putting an elephant into oh, you get a the small idea. closet. Um, you can also stop four. it by touching the side here. Um, but it also can be from other surfaces, like your smartphone, your computer screen, a sign on the wall, you know, things like that. So it can help people read more text around them, and there's, uh, there's other functions. Right, right. It helps people access the text around them. Uh, the next function I want to show you is uh, facial recognition. So, very quick process, one time process to program your face in. So, I'm just gonna keep my finger on the device and you'll hear what happens next, okay? Face learning. Please keep holding the bar for up to 30 seconds. Please name the person in front of you after the beep. UA from Tech the Lead. UA from Tech the Lead. Touch to confirm that in person. Okay, one-time process. So now when I look at you, I will hear. UA from Tech to Lead. Whoa! There you go. So if I'm visually impaired and I'm walking down the street and you're approaching me, I'll hear your name whispered in my ear as you're getting close to me. Can you point it at my cameraman, see if it reads him uh, as UA from Tech to Lead? He's not yeah, you, right. but but if I but if I try uh, reading who's in front of me, let's see what happens. A man is in front of me. A man you. is in front of me. It says man, woman, young woman, young man, or child. Are uh, the oh. five different. Uh, and if the person is uh, kind of in the shot of OrCam, but it can't, not, not a full profile, not a full uh, uh, facing, 
it will say a person, not, not wanting to guess whether it's a man or a woman, but still identifying a human being is in front of you, you know? And what are some of the use cases for identifying? For people like in a workplace environment or even at home, you know, I had somebody tell me who was a user before he got to OrCam, he was talking to somebody in a room and then the person left, he didn't know it, he was talking to a chair. This is the US version I'm demonstrating and there are a million consumer US barcodes programmed in the database in this device. So I have a Tabasco sauce right here. And of course, I can use OrCam to read the ingredients of the Tabasco sauce, but oftentimes, like this consumer product, the logo is very artistic. It's not standard font, right? Mm. So I can identify it by the barcode. So you see how this panel right here is the barcode? Mm -hmm. I'm just going to hold it in front of me, and you'll hear what happens. Tabasco chili sauce, habanero, 60 milliliters. What just happened pretty instantly is without me pointing or tapping, OrCam grabbed the barcode, made a match to the database here, and gave me the product information. So if you are trying to cook or if you're or at the grocery store. Absolutely. And also money notes, especially with US currency, it's all the same color and size, right? I just hold this bill here. Five dollars. Five dollars. And that's preloaded as well. It's fantastic. And how many different languages? So we're at the point where we're in 25 different languages, including very recently Chinese and Japanese in almost 50 countries. And how does this little device work offline? Yeah, this is a really important point about this device. Um, all the operation that you're hearing is happening completely offline, and there's two very big advantages to that. Number one, uh, it works in real time. So telling you the, the face, the text, the color is all happening in real time because all the computing is done in this closed system right here. And the second big advantage is there are no data privacy concerns. Nothing's being sent to the cloud to be processed and beamed back to the device. It's all happening again right, right here. And, um, you know, it's also important that our users have a device they can depend on in any situation. So you can be in that corner of the supermarket without any reception, or even in, on an airplane, you know, you can use a device anywhere, really. And so this is the second rendition of the My yeah. Eye. The first one was, it was purely reading text in audio form and identifying. At, at, at first, and then we added faces, and also the form factor was more bulky in the sense that it had a base unit the size of a smartphone, it was wired to a head unit. With this device here, we lost the base unit, lost the wire, and everything is this, in this tiny device. And functionality-wise, what's in version two? So we have barcode reading now, which we didn't have before. Um, I'll show you something else, actually, that I think is, is pretty cool. I showed you earlier the pointing gesture to activate reading and stop gesture to stop reading. Um, as far as we know, this is the only wearable assistive technology device in the world that responds to intuitive gestures. Mm. I have one more gesture to show you, which is the telling time gesture, okay? Um, I have a watch on this. I have a watch on this. I have a watch on this uh, arm, but not this one, right? I'm going to bring this wrist to my face as if I have a watch on, okay? The time is 12:52 p.m. What happened? This motion, this gesture, activated OrCam to tell me the time, which is right in here. And is that a feature that's only in the second version? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We pioneered in the second version. And you're showing this for the first time at CES. Uh, no, I'll show you. Uh, for the first time at CES is a new feature, which isn't even out there yet. It's coming out in the coming months. Okay. And you guys are among the first to actually experience Woo! this. It's called interactive reading. So up until now, you had to go through the whole text. Um, you could fast forward, pause, and rewind, but you had to go through the whole text. With interactive reading, you can actually ask OrCam certain information of interest to you, not having to go through everything. So I'm just going to tap twice and ask the device to start interactive reading, okay? Start interactive reading. Okay. Ready. Okay, so it took a photo, and that's all I need. And this, uh, this card right here is about the American Museum of Natural History, and you can see there's four dates here, for example, right? So I'm going to ask Orkham to tell me the dates. So read dates. Found four dates. The first date, the ultimate predator starting November 11th, 2019. The next date, butterfly conservatory starting December 3rd, 2019. The next date, our blue planet starting May 1st, 2019. The next date, dark universe starting March 2nd, 2019. So there's an example of asking, I'll show you one more actually. There's only one phone number on here, right? Mm -hmm. In the bottom here, and it's actually in pretty light font, mm -hmm. in great font. Read phone numbers. Did you mean read phone numbers? Yes. Found one phone number. Phone two, one, two, seven, six, nine, five, one, zero, zero. And something else I want to show you, which is really amazing, you can actually ask OrCam to find instances of a specific word. Find Manhattan. 
found one result located on the upper west side of Manhattan. So there you go. I asked Orkham for a certain word. It read the preceding few words to give me the context and didn't have to go through the whole text to find it. And Rafi, what about if this document was ultra sensitive or confidential? Absolutely. Does that information get stored somewhere? Great question. No, it doesn't, and that's by design. When you're reading the block of text, you can pause, you can skip forward, skip backward, but once Orcam reaches that very last word of text, it forgets it. None of, nothing's stored, and that's to protect the privacy of our users. So if somebody gets a hold of it, they can't know what was previously read, you know? And what is the next level of this, this My Eye? Because one, you know, level one was last year, and right. here we have version 2.0. Right. What about translations or reading moods? Right, that's something that we actually are working on in terms of, you know, person sad, happy, um, translation is something we're looking at. Um, we're also going to be uh, pioneering later this year a, a feature of orientation. And that involves two parts, uh, identification of objects and mobility. So working with a with chair, it can come in all different shapes, sizes, colors. I mean, your face is unique, font is standard, but chairs is kind of like in the middle there somewhere. But we pioneered the device that we're going to. We're in the process of identifying chairs, tables, staircases, doorways, cups to help with identification of your surroundings. But on top of that, we'll have the ability to open that door or to reach for that cup. What happens will be, uh, through a series of beeps that are increasing or decreasing, your hand will be guided. Basically taking the pointing gesture to the next level in terms of guiding your hand to what you want to open or touch. Very cool. A anything else, like if you could invent your most ideal Orcam My Eye, what, what are some of the features that you hope that it can do? I mean, really, like the whole path we're taking here is to reach complete scene understanding. What I mean by that is this, you know, when Orcam snaps a photo, there's potentially so much information that could relate, it would overwhelm the user of the device. Um, and so we're getting to the point now where we want only specific information that we feel of as a value or, the, or is a value to that person to be related. So that's why we're developing, you know, the orientation, um, uh, you know, uh, text reading, um, and, uh, you know, in terms of the interactive reading. And, and, that, and that is the next level in terms of asking Orcam any question you want and getting the answer you need. So the Orcam Maya 2 is absolutely revolutionizing the way people see and the people and the way people can navigate around the world, especially those who are visually impaired or blind. And that is exactly why we are awarding your product with our Tech the Lead oh, Best wow. CES 2020 award. Wow, this wow, is a, wow. actually, can you, can you read yeah, the yeah. award? Yes, <laughs> of course I can, yes. TechTheLead.com Best of CES 2020. And here you go. Thank you so much. This is a great, great surprise. I really Congratulations. Well you. deserved. Thank you.